Hey everybody, welcome to Brickboard, my name is Mike and welcome to our MOX video. This week around we have a mix of things, that means cars, buildings, space stuff, all these kinds of stuff. So let's get just into it. And as always guys, you can find the links to those awesome mocks in the video description below. And if you want to submit your fan mocks that we're showing at the end of the episode, please use this email and also remember to follow the rules that are also listed in the description. Number 10 is still the craziness with the Brickheads team, but this time around there is something a bit more different that Unijob Linda building the Brick Morphs. Uh, those as you can see are Brickheads in their Transformers form. The unit on display here is the blue unit 09, that's codename Crabbot Brawler, and also red unit 155, that's codename Battle Truck. And just when you are about to think that you've seen everything in the Brickheads form, this comes around, and I have to say that Unijob did a great thing in making the Brickheads unique again. And of course, as the name suggests, they do transform, and there is even space for the pilot in each one of them. We getting the pilot in the form of this midi scale fig that was not that popular in LEGO, but hey, you can still find those parts. I think the designer went as far as creating his own stickers for each one of them, and I think he's even trying to get a full theme up, so those may be just a first, you know, display, or just test pieces for the entire line of brick morphs. I would love to see more, so I'm gonna be following this designer to see if we can get more brick morphs in the near future. Number 9 is a nostalgia build and that is Blacktron Gremlin by Lino Martins. Um, the designer just said himself why did he build this? Because Blacktron. I mean come on, that was one of the best space dims ever made, I loved those sets so much and this uh, yellow and black color just brings back memories. The car doesn't seem to be too big in size but in some ways it does capture this creator line feel but with a Blacktron touch of course. I think it's a bit bulky but that's how the Blacktron sets were. I mean this yellow and black color is of course exact like in the theme and we do have some interior plus some moving doors and some good details that only a true Blacktron fan would capture. For me the theme is somewhat still between the ice planet and maybe the space police or even the classic space but it was so recognizable back in the days that it just keeps being added to any possible mock on any LEGO convention. In all honesty I have not seen a car like that for quite a while and usually the Blacktron mocks are about recreating the Blacktron sets or getting some bigger bases with much more epic detail, a car is something really new so that is why I give a good thumbs up for Lino for creating this one. Number 8 was made by the designer coming from the Cradle of Lego Denmark, that's Lasse Vastergaard, I hope I pronounced it right, and this design is called Lego Around the World, it is including 26 countries on a number of base plates or just some modular builds, I don't really know, but what really catches the eye is the beautiful sphere for the Earth globe. We have uh, again 26 countries included on each one of these uh, simple um, vignettes or dioramas, and each one of them has a selection of minifigures that are really connected to the given country and some iconic landmark to go with that. I think that's pretty awesome. I like the color combo with using the sand and green for those more dry countries and those more greenish countries. You know, it kind of works and the display looks amazing. I think that is a good thing to have if you go to a convention, you have a ready to go modular Lego around the world. Moving up, number 7 is by a very well known designer to us, that's Tim Goddard with his Zycon 6. And of course that looks exactly, well maybe not exactly, but just a huge upgrade from the famous Ice Planet set, the Deep Freeze Defender. The color combo of course is the same, we have beautiful orange canopies for the main cockpit pieces and a combination of blue and white to complement this great looking ship. And I think this kind of an upgrade is a very welcome to one, a studless build with a beautiful shaping. The original ship was having this shape that was very iconic to this line of sets back in the 90s, but this thing is just a huge step forward. I love also the revamp of the back section, the original one had those garage door pieces for the storage area and this one has some sort of that as well, but much more uh, better done of course and with all those uh, pieces to include the details, it is just looking amazing. Tim is a very talented designer, so if you want to check out his spaceships and other cool builds, be sure to get into his Flickr page because there is a lot to look for. After that awesome spaceship, number 6 is a throwback in time, that is the Medieval Village by iLive. It is a massive build that is consisting of several builds that iLive created over the years 
and this is just an epitome of his medieval theme creation. I mean, just look at it, it's so epic, including a castle, a number of things by the shore, number of houses and everything is so colorful and detailed, I'm simply astonished how well this thing turned out. What immediately catches the eye is a great build for the shoreline waters using different shades of blue to create depth. Also, the rock formations and the sandy beaches create a very welcoming environment for those approaching ships. And this all merges very quickly into a very beautifully done medieval village. I'm sure that medieval ages are not very welcoming for tourists and things like that, but this looks pretty amazing with the use of foliage for the palm trees and some other stuff and along with those colorful rooftops to create nice breaks in the entire color scheme. This uh, just looks amazing, I think it's a great achievement to create such thing, took a lot of time and after seeing such formations, such dioramas, I immediately wanted to have them in our city only if we had the bricks and the space and maybe even instructions, but this is just a lifetime build so I don't expect that, great little not little, but massive diorama. Now with number 5, let's throw some technique into this lineup for this week. This is Lamborghini Veneno by Ayaklan Cameron. The Veneno is one of the most expensive and most crazy looking and iconic cars ever made. I think there are only 5 in existence right now, made by Lamborghini. And this car captures this beautiful, beautiful engineering marvel in a great detail. Without any doubt, I can say that this level of complexity for the Veneno is on par with the official Porsche GT3 RS from LEGO. And if LEGO ever picked up this beautiful car for a set, they should use Ayaklan's design. As expected, the car opens up as the real thing, it has the same aggressive looks and you even have LED lights to go with that. I am just not sure if that is the case of beautiful photography made by Ayaklan on his Flickr page or just the model being simply awesome, but I fell in love with it and it may actually turn me back into Technic, which I'm not a big fan of. All in all, I can just say, hey Lego, call this guy up and maybe pick up the set for your store's shelves. And with number 4, all I can say, welcome back Ian Heath, that is one of our favorite creators that we feature in our mock videos, and uh, this time around he came back with a set of mocks titled Chichiro's Journey, that is coming from the movie Spirited Away. As I don't know much about the movie, I know it's a very iconic one, all I can say, those mocks use a friend's minifig, and they are very very artsy. Let's just check them out without any talking. Amazing again, isn't it? Thank you, Ian. After this beautiful artistic mock, we have something more futuristic slash realistic. This is the portal ship by Shio and it looks great, something that I would not be surprised to see in the far future of humanity when we finally develop that warp travel. This is one of these builds that don't really look like Lego at all, even from afar and from the close-ups. I mean, the use of pieces is simply astonishing. Every single ring, that's mostly a ring ship of course, but every single piece of it looks like something really special. The use of techniques and connections is mesmerizing and I love this shot with a small ship passing through the portal. I wonder if that's gonna be really looking like if we ever develop such technology. The shots don't really tell the size of it. I mean, even if the ship passing through the portal is micro scale, the whole thing around it must be pretty massive. I just assume it takes about few good inches of size. But anyway, I have to be honest, this ship is so high up the list because of the originality and because I just love spaceships. We are going into spot number 2 with style and that is a very classic looking build. It's by Bricks on Wheels, of course it's a car, with a long name, that's 1935 Dusenberg SJ Dual Call Phaeton in LEGO, the scale is 1 to 8.5. And I know that many purists will say, hey, he used chrome pieces, so that's not technically official LEGO. Well, it's not, but I think the effect of this chrome finish on many parts just adds to the amazingness of this model. It looks like a diecast car to me, the whole studless effect is uh, used to a great extent, and of course the old details are there. The engine, everything inside, the tiny little things that made this car so luxurious back in 1935, just create an amazing, one of the best lookings I've seen so far this year, actually, 
LEGO model. I am not very much into the classic cars if I can be honest with you, but I'm sure the designer is very proud of this one because this is a one hunk of a model. Alright, and number one has to be something truly epic to top off this list, and I think it is, both in scale and the sheer amount of time it had to be put into it. This is the LEGO Wooden Roller Coaster by Chairudo and the scale, I mean, just look at it. The designer does not really tell much about this model, I can't even guesstimate the number of pieces, of course it's in tens of thousands, and uh, well, it's all brown, so I'm not really sure how many brown pieces he used, but wow, the sheer size and the actual accuracy to what a wooden roller coaster really looks like in real life is astonishing. I've seen these big bad boys in Six Flags uh, in Los Angeles and many other places. I love roller coasters personally, so this may be a biased choice, but you can agree probably that the sheer um, effort it was put into this model can justify the number one spot for this list. Judging by the fact that there's really no description of the model, I cannot tell if the wagons can be run down the coaster like it would be in real life. But uh, given the fact that the tracks look legit and all the barriers are there, actually it may be possible to run a train down and get some action going. You can also even see some additions on the side of the track. There is a beautiful build for the trees using those leaves pieces. And I think there is also a good spot to maybe expand the whole build with the official creator sets like the carousel or the ferris wheel. I think it would be awesome. And that is of course a good start to create a massive Lego fairground. <clears throat> and also number one spot for this mock, maybe by the fact that I was really in love with the roller coaster tycoon games. So this thing might be hitting just the right notes. All right, and that's it for this week's top 10 mocks. And now it's time to show off your creations that you keep sending to our Brick Vault fan mocks email. Thank you guys for doing that, we really appreciate it. But please follow the rules listed in the video description below to make our lives easier and to make sure all your mocks are included in the video. Anyway, thanks for watching. Now it's time for your mocks. Let's cue the music, subscribe and like, and I'll see you again next time.